Hi, my name is Kristen Tata, and I will be demoing my weather function program that predicts the weather up to five days given um, weather data. And this particular function uses, or this particular program uses, um, weather data from winter of 2014. The dates range from December 21st of 2014 all the way until March 19th of 2015 of this year. So um, this weather data, you know, weather forecast uh, program, like I said, it spits out a, or it outputs a five-day weather forecast. And the only thing that it needs is just two inputs. So the first input that it needs is R, which would be the current day's weather pattern. The current day's weather pattern can fall into one of eight states, as can be seen here. They're categorized into eight states. And, um, you know, just for example, the first state that, you know, that it's possible for the weather data to fall into is that the day is hot, rainy, and windy. What I mean by that is that hot has to mean that the temperature has to be greater than or equal to 72 degrees for that day. Rainy would mean that the rainfall had to be greater than zero inches. And the wind factor, okay, so the mean wind speed for it to be considered windy had to be greater than or equal to five miles per hour. So according to this legend, you're going to categorize, categorize the current day's weather you know, pattern into one of these eight states. So for R, we're going to input a value between 1 and 8. T is going to be the order of the Markov chain that we want to use to predict the weather. So for a first order Markov chain, we'll input 1. Second order, 2. Third order, 3, and so forth. Here we have Q, which is the transition matrix, which holds all of the data. Um, uh, so the percentages. So given a current state, it's going to, uh, the row for that current state is going to contain all of the percentages for the next day's state, the next day's weather pattern. So this is going to be the first row of our 8x8 eight eight matrix. And... This is, yeah, like I said, the first row. The first row is going to be hot, rainy, windy. So hot, rainy, windy, it, as you see, it's all zeros. The first eight entries are zeros, um, except for one. And there's a one right here. And that's on the one, two, third state. So it means that if it was hot, rainy, and windy, um, you can expect every day, actually not expect, but every single day in the data that I collected, um, whenever it was a hot, rainy, windy day, the next day was hot, dry, and windy. So, and, you know, and so forth. So the next eight entries are going to be um, for cold, dry, and calm. So if it's cold, dry, and calm, you have a 0% chance of the next day of being hot, rainy, windy. 3 twelfths is 1 fourth, so 0.25% is going to be, um, you know, cold, dry, and calm. And so, like I said, so this is the percentages for the next day's data. Um, now depending, let's see, so now we want um, we want to update our transition matrix because that's just a first order. So what if um, you know we wanted a second order? So as you can see the new matrix would be equivalent to this transition matrix Q raised to a certain power. So if it's for second, so if it's for the first order it's going to be just raised to the first degree which would just give us back our Q our transition matrix. If we want 2, then it'd be Q squared, so this 8 by 8 matrix times itself, another 8 by 8 matrix, um, which would output another 8 by 8 matrix, which, um, you know, would be Q to the second power. And if we wanted a third order, it'd be to the third power, and so forth. Okay, so now we have X. The next line of code says X is equal to, um, we're going to take our matrix M, and we're going to look at the row R, which was our state, if you remember um, up here, we inputted a number for R, so whatever state that we are um, in is going to correspond to our row. And so X equals this matrix, um, you know, the row of the matrix, and it's just saying every entry in that row. So this, is, this line of code is just saying, hey, give me all the percentages of the row that corresponds with the state that I'm interested in. And then this next value, this next line of code says y is equal to the maximum of that row. 
So well, the only thing that we're interested in, because weather data or weather prediction is going to be, you know, based on percentages and based on the most, the most likely you know weather pattern to happen the next day. Um, that's all this is saying. Just give me the highest percentage in that row, and that's what I'm gonna um, you know output as my next day's weather forecast. And so then we're gonna look at you know that entry that we find to be the highest percentage. We're gonna see right here. We're gonna get the row col the row index and the column index of that entry. We don't really need the row index because we already know it from up here. Um, you know, it's gonna be the state that we're currently in. Um, but for the column index, we're gonna use that as our, you know, as our new current state. So for the next day's output or next day's forecast, we are going to say, hey, we're gonna use that column index and that's gonna be our new current state that we're in. And it's gonna to correspond to a value between one and eight. And so the next line of code is going to say, hey, here's our matrix, you know, looking at our matrix again, our same matrix, because if you use first order chain, it's going to be first order chain for the whole entire, you know, prediction, second order chain, you know, for the whole entire prediction and so forth. Um, so we're going to use the same matrix M is equal to now the number that we got, the state that we got from, you know, the next day's data, which is now our current day's data. And we're going to look at that row. We're going to go ahead and get the maximum value of that row again. And that, um, you know, will output our, um, you know, our next day's weather forecast. And then again, we're going to take the column index and of that entry, of that highest percentage, and we're going to make that our new current state, which we're going to use here. And it's just, it's a very, it's a recursive um, algorithm in that it just, you know, does the same thing over and over again, um, you know, just with updated values. So it spits out, like I said, a five day, um, you know, weather forecast, as you can see here, W is equal to, um, you know, the, the, here we go, the current day plus the next day, next day, next day, next day. So if we want to run it, let's say our first value is going to equal, we have to type in the function that we want, weather. Um, R was our current day's weather, so pretend like it's two. Cold, dry, and calm. Oop, where'd it go? Cold, dry, and calm. And let's use a first order Markov chain. There we go. And see, the output is an array of numbers corresponding to the legend that we saw on the other screen, our function file. Um, let's see, so we have, you know, two, and then every day thereafter is gonna be six. So if it starts out as cold, dry, and calm every day for the rest of the week, it's predicted to be cold, dry, and windy. Oops, cold, dry, and windy. Let's go ahead and compare the difference between the different orders of Markov chains. W2 is equal to weather. It's cold, dry, and calm again. And let's do the second order Markov chain. And let's go ahead and see the difference between the third and fourth. So as you can see, the first and second order Markov chains yield the same forecast, and the third and fourth Markov chains yield the same forecast, even though the first and second are differ, you know, differ from the third and fourth. Um, so like I said, if it starts out cold, dry, and calm, every day thereafter for the first and second order Markov chain is predicted to be cold, dry, and windy. For the third and fourth Markov chains, order Markov chains, if it's cold, dry, and calm, then they, the next four days are predicted to be hot, dry, and windy. So as you can see, there is a difference in the predictions using the different orders of Markov chains. The higher order typically give, yields you know, more accurate results. Okay, thank you for watching my demo. Bye.